Here's a quick video to learn how to do the scoring sheet for the basketball games from the scorers table. There are two types of scoring sheet, the one that has both teams in one sheet and the one that is one sheet per team. Let's focus on the one sheet per team and let's focus on the key areas of this. We have where the team name goes, usually on the top, the player's numbers, usually it's the only thing that is covered, personal fouls, that's by player, and then we have team's fouls. I will explain that a little bit later. We have team timeouts and the running score for each team. Let's go ahead and add the team name, the player's numbers, and usually the names are not added, but for this exercise, let's add the player's name as well. Next, we're gonna review the hand signals provided by the referees to the score table to find out who committed the personal foul. I will go ahead and have the other guy with the accent take it away from here the arm in the air indicates a foul when it's a clenched fist this is a foul on number eight for pushing foul this time two shots is to be awarded to the other team this foul is on number 10 for blocking now let's start recording the personal fouls on the score sheet after you record a personal foul like here number four John, then you have to go to the team fouls on the top to mark that as well. The other foul was on mark number 20. Then you need to go back to the top on the first half section and mark the second personal foul. It will continue to work that way. Every personal foul will be added as a team foul on top. Even if it becomes the second foul for mark number 20, then now is the fourth team foul for that team. It continues on all the way to the most important part of why we are recording the personal fouls and the team fouls. The team fouls are mainly recorded to make sure that when the team gets to the bonus, to the penalty, we can go ahead and alert the referee that the other team has gotten to the penalty, which is the seventh foul, and let them know that we have free throws for every single foul committed. As a courtesy, we have to let the ref know that the seventh foul has been committed. All of this information will also be posted on the scoreboard. So it's not only up to you, the refs always keep that information in mind as well, but it's also to keep track of where we stand with the fouls. Continuing with the exercise regarding personal fouls and team fouls, the next step is to when the team gets to the double bonus or the double penalty. That means that they have committed 10 fouls within one half. That's another point that we need to alert the ref that there is double bonus, that it should be any foul committed will be a shot as well. These are the parts related to the personal fouls and the team fouls and how it works. Now we're gonna move on to team's timeout. Make sure that you mark the team timeout out, but the most important part is to make sure that you mark the time and half that the team timeout was taken. Write out the team timeout somewhere on the scorer's sheet so you can keep it for reference. Most likely there's going to be a point that the coaches are going to ask you at what time the timeouts were taken and then you have a point of reference or where to look and give them specific times that each timeout was taken. Usually we get three timeouts per game but those rules change by league. Next, we're going to move to the running score. And also to keep in mind that the running score doesn't mean players' points. We usually don't keep track of personal stats, so you don't have to worry about that area. Just the team running score that usually is at the bottom. You will mark the points score. You will be shown by the referee if it's a two-pointer or a three-pointer. And at that point, you will be able to mark it on the running score. Everybody will be able to see the scoreboard, so you will be able to also keep tabs of where you stand with the actual score. Continue with the exercise, adding points. You just keep marking the points off until the half is over. When the half is over, make sure to mark somewhere how many points were scored in the first half. Uh, that would allow you to keep easier track. You can also mark the entire scoreboard for the first half. That would allow you to see and show the opponent where we actually stand. I also like to mark the entire section of the points scored in the first half out to make it easier to start scoring the points for the second half. Then that way that gives you a clean slate to know where to start. 
and continuing with the exercise of adding points on the running score. Then at the end of the game, here's the key. You add the final score at, on the score sheet. All of these are personal preferences that I like to add to the equation to make sure that we keep track of all the information and the other question has no doubt that Academia won the game.